Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself Amata. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. As usual, I am here with the latest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 21st of July. We've got quite a bit to get through today, so I'm just going to get stuck right in and our first topic is regarding Intel's Alder Lake. So what we have here is an article which was discovered by videocards.com from the Mail Archive. So of course you can find video cards article linked below. And essentially we see a confirmation that Intel's Alder Lake will feature big and small core architecture. And the small cores are actually going to be derivative of Atom, at least from what we can tell. This is a comment made by an Intel employee um, which you can see on screen, and it shows hybrid core Atom processors define Intel FAM6 Lakefield 0x8A, and then underneath Intel FAM6 Alder Lake 0x97. So we are expecting Alder Lake to use a newer core design of that, that of Golden Cove, and that is going to be paired with the small cores of Gracemont, and we're going to be seeing it come with integrated XE graphics. Now, obviously, we've previously seen rumored via leaks that we would be seeing a new socket being introduced for Intel's desktop processors with Alder Lake, that being LGA1700, and is expected to support PCIe 4 and D. DDR5. Now we already kind of sort of knew that just from previous leaks and oopsies done by Intel prior to this, but still. But moving on from Intel to the other side of the spectrum in the CPU space, that being of course AMD and Renoir. And AMD have officially announced their fourth generation Ryzen 4000G and Ryzen Pro 4000G desktop processors, and these are for pre-built OEMs. So for the moment at least you can only find them on pre-built consumer and commercial desktops by the usual companies like HP, Dell, or Lenovo, whoever. But AMD have said that they are looking at DIY parts in the future, but for now at least they are OEM only. So let's talk specs, shall we? And I'm going to begin with the 4000G series. So for the 4700G, G, excuse me, we do see 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.6 GHz base and a 4.4 GHz boost with 12 megs of cache, 8 graphics cores and a graphics frequency of 2100 MHz. I will just say as a quick note, all of the top NG parts, which I'm going to mention, all have a TDP of 65 watts, so do just keep that in mind as I move forward. So let's move on to the 4600G, 6 cores, 12 threads, 3.7 GHz base and 4.2 GHz boost, 11 megs of cache this time, 7 graphics cores and a graphics frequency of 1900 MHz. As for the 4300G, 4 cores, 8 threads, 3.8 GHz base and 4.0 GHz boost, 6 megs of cache and 6 graphics cores with a graphics frequency of 1700 as for the GE parts, these all have 35 watt TDP, so just keep that in mind. And the top of that stack is 4700 GE, 8 cores, 16 threads, 3.1 gigahertz base, 4.3 gigahertz boost, 12 boost, excuse me, not boost, boost is not a word, <laughs> 12 megs of cache, 8 graphics scores, and 2000 megahertz uh, graphics frequency. Below that we see the 4600 GE, 6 cores, 12 threads, 3.3 GHz and 4.2 GHz uh, boost, 11 megs of cache, 7 graphics cores and 1900 MHz. And for the final one for this line we do see the 4300 GE, 4 cores, 8 threads, 3.5 GHz base, 4.0 GHz boost, 6 megs of cache, 6 graphics cores and 1700 MHz graphics frequency. But moving on to the Pro parts, we do see the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G, 8 core, 16 threads, 3.6 GHz base, a 4.4 GHz boost, 12 megs of total cache, and a TDP of 65 watts, which we see on all three of these parts. Below that, though, however, is the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G, 6 cores, 12 threads, 4 point, um, sorry, 3.7 gigahertz base and 4.2 gigahertz boost, 11 megs of cache, and for the final part, the Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G, 4 cores, 8 threads, 3.8 gigahertz base, and 4.0 gigahertz boost, and a 6 meg cache. 
Now obviously all of these parts, as you have undoubtedly gleaned, have integrated graphics, but it is important to note that Renoir Desktop does support external graphics cards with a PCIe 3x8 interface, so no PCIe 4 support. PCIe subsystem has not been updated on these particular parts. But obviously these parts are mostly going to be used by OEMs in pre-built systems without discrete graphics. It's all going to be relying on the integrated graphics of the Renoir CPU or APU, I should say, sorry, uh, inside the machine. We're going to move on from AMD though to NVIDIA. We're going for all the companies today as we have some pretty big rumours regarding Ampere. And this time around we have a tweet from Cat Corgi and they state the RTX 3080 has 20% increase, or has about 20% increase I should say, compared with the RTX 2080 Ti. Now unfortunately they don't give any further information as to where this information came from or even what resolution this was a specific claim made at. But 20% increase over the RTX 2080 Ti does actually make sense and I think it's likely to be true. And of course it does line up with previous reports and leaks uh, regarding the expected performance of the RTX 3080. Now the 3080 Ti, if it's even called that, of course rumours are that it could be called the 3090, but regardless of what it ends up being called, it could be called Flugelgork for all I know. But a 20% lead over the 2080 Ti could suggest that the 3080 Ti could end up being roughly 40-50% to faster than the 2080. So obviously these are just preliminary numbers and obviously it is a tweet cat corgi however has been pretty on the money when it comes to this sort of thing but obviously just take it with the usual healthy dose of skepticism. But I expect we won't have to wait too much longer to finally know officially what is happening with the RTX 30 series as a whole because we're expecting Nvidia to unveil the cards sometime next month and obviously as I've said before with the 20 series, they unveiled them at Gamescom, which is in August. Obviously, Gamescom isn't happening this year, but I would expect something to be revealed around that sort of time, or potentially earlier, or obviously later as well, but roughly around there is sort of my guesstimate as to when we will see the RTX Ampere cards finally unveiled, and hopefully the price is right as well. Because, as we've seen from all the leaks about RDNA 2 and all the information we've been told, RDNA 2 is looking to be pretty damn impressive and AMD are definitely trying to keep NVIDIA on their toes and I, and I hope that NVIDIA have managed to price a bit more competitively uh, than they did last generation. Moving on however to our next NVIDIA topic, hope you guys were looking for yet another GTX 1650. And just to kind of refresh your memory, this is, would be the third variant of this particular uh, GPU. Well, of course, it originally released on the TU-117 GPU and was later refreshed with a super variant which had TU-116 GPU as well as more cores. And obviously then we saw that update, the original model updated, sorry, shall I say, with GDDR6. And now we have seen a photo tweeted by Momomo whose name you should be very familiar with, of course, you can find their tweet linked below, along with all other pertinent links. They have posted a photograph which shows a T116-150 GPU from a Gigabyte model. So this is a variant of the GTX 1650 GDDR6 version, which I just mentioned. So all I'm going to say on this one, to sort of kind of reference the IT crowd, there's three of them now! With that said, let's move on to some news for the PS5. So, this is a pretty interesting one. I do want to say this is a leak rumour, something unconfirmed, thanks to a Reddit user by the name of K Garvey. Now, they decided to go digging through the source code of the new website from Sony, direct.playstation.com. And there is a very interesting piece of wording that states, quotes, purchase one version of the PS5 console, disc or digital. So this obviously suggests that you will only be able to purchase one PS5 per household. It also of course suggests that pre-orders are going to go live soon, so hopefully we'll finally learn what this thing is going to cost. But if you think about it, obviously this does kind of make sense. The demand for this console is expected to be massive. 
And you may recall recently I reported that Sony are allegedly doubling their production to 10 million units, but despite this, Sony are apparently still taking measures to ensure that customers are not left disappointed by limiting purchases. Now, Kay Garvey also stated on the Reddit thread that they will be able to available to reserve within two weeks, and also the placeholder page on Amazon for the PS5 pre-order is also live. Obviously, you can't actually do anything yet, and obviously there's no price or anything, sadly. But, yeah, this does make sense. And I don't blame Sony at all for hedging their bets because with everything that's going on in the world right now, it is better just to be a bit more careful uh, with these things. But we're going to finish up today's proceedings with a very interesting rumour regarding Halo Infinite. Now this once again has come from the well-known Xbox insider Clobreel, or Clob Clobreel, either way, on the Reset Era forums. And of course you can find that linked below. And according to them, we will actually see a grappling hook making an appearance in the game. But it will act more like the equipment you could pick up, which was featured in Halo 3. And he said, quote, grappling hook is in, as to my limited knowledge, but it's more like an equipment pickup similar to Halo 3. No idea how that is included in the campaign. So obviously his information is more about the multiplayer, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is included in the main game, but perhaps is some sort of contextual prompt that you can only use on certain materials, kind of like what we've seen uh, with Ghost of Tsushima, for those of you who have been playing or watching streams or whatever, you can use a grappling hook on certain places, and it would kind of make sense to include it in that way. However, he did have more information to share on the multiplayer itself. According to Clobrill again, Halo Infinite Arena is actually going to go back to classic map control gameplay, and is also going to feature a lot of power-ups that will complement the map area as well. And he said, quote, Halo Infinite Arena is all about going back to classic map control gameplay, power weapons and power-ups. There are a lot of cool map power-ups to complement the sandbox. Grapple hook, thrust or classics like overshield. All this is very dynamic and might vary heavily based on playlist, etc. But of course, more on that on a later date. Of course, we probably won't have to wait too long at all to see how true this is, given that Microsoft has not been shy about stating that we will be seeing Halo Infinite gameplay at the upcoming Xbox Games Showcase, so we'll have to see. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.